section 11-2, we're going to learn about the area of parallelograms, triangles, and rhombuses today. Okay, now those of you who are watching at home, you're not going to be able to see my first example. I apologize, I'm actually using a sheet of paper. But you'll just have to listen and use your imagination. <laughs> okay. Yesterday we did area of rectangles, which the formula was base times height. Base times height. Remember the base and the height are perpendicular to each other. We also did the area of a square, which is side squared. We did perimeters yesterday, also of each one of those. Tomorrow at the beginning of class, we're going to have a quiz on the formulas from yesterday and today. You just need to know the formulas. Okay? It's just a memorization thing. Make sure you memorize those formulas. Because we got to know the formulas Wait, before we can use them. The ones we learned yesterday and the ones we're going to learn today. All right. Now, yesterday we said that a rectangle, the area can be found by multiplying the base times the height. Correct? Yes, correct. Okay, I have taken an 8 by 11 piece of paper. And I have cut it in such a way that when I place it together, I have here the shape of a what? Parallelogram. Parallelogram. I'm not sure if it's a rhombus because I don't know if this is also 11. Okay? But I do know it's a parallelogram because opposite sides are equal and parallel. Now, remember yesterday we said the base and the height of an object is always perpendicular distances to each other, correct? So if you notice, I have the height labeled as 8 inches, and I have the base here labeled as 11 inches. All right? Now, watch what happens when I take that little triangle off the edge. And put it back where it's stored. Now what do I have? Rectangle. rectangle. I have a rectangle. This was my original piece of paper. Okay? I have a rectangle and the base and the height are still 8 and 11. So if a parallelogram can be manipulated to form a rectangle that has the exact same base and height, how do you think we'd find the area of a parallelogram? Base times height. Okay, so our first formula today is the area of a parallelogram. And just like a rectangle, it is the base times the height. Now, the difference between a parallelogram and a rectangle, however, is that for a parallelogram, our height is inside the shape. And the base can either be the bottom portion, which is perpendicular, to that height or the opposite side from that because aren't opposite sides of a parallelogram equal to each other yes okay so either one of those can be called the base and then the perpendicular distance between them would be the height now you're going to be given information using degree measures special triangles and things of that sort to be able to find possibly your height you may just be given an angle measure here and a length here, all right? You will have to draw this imaginary line creating a right triangle. And if this is, was, say, a 30, 60, 90, we could figure out the missing piece, okay? If it was not 30, 60, 90 or 45, 45, 90, if this angle was just, say, 12, we could use sine, cosine, tangent information to figure out missing pieces. All right, so we're using old information. All right. The next thing I want to show you is how we found or how we find the, uh, what you call it, area of a triangle. Okay, if you look at the black shape, that is exactly what we just had, right? Right. It's a parallelogram. How do we find the area of a parallelogram? Base, Base times height. Right, right. Now, you're right, but let's prove it. When I draw one diagonal across this parallelogram, don't we know that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And in the two triangles created, isn't this diagonal equal to itself through the reflexive property? So through side, 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 I have two what? Congruent triangles. And if they're congruent, then everything about them is congruent. The corresponding sides are congruent. Corresponding angles are congruent. Their areas are congruent. Their perimeters are congruent. You get the point? Okay. So if we found the area of the whole thing by doing base times height, and a triangle is exactly half, of that parallelogram, how are we going to find the area of a triangle? Divided by two. You can either say one half or you can say divided by two. Okay? So our next formula for today is the area of a triangle. And it's equal to one half the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. Now, that's great, but if you can't identify the base and the height of a triangle, then you're going to have issues. And so on the next slide, I have pictures of the three diff different types of triangles that we're going to be looking at. Acute, obtuse, and right triangles. And we're going to show, because no matter which, you can choose any side to be a base. But when you change the side that's the base, the height changes. Okay? Yes? Could you just find, like, if you gave us... Um measurements of like the, the parallelogram, could we just do that and then divide it by two or we would have to use the one to the triangle? Something? Well, if you have the measurements like this and this, uh -huh. you cannot use those two measurements straight up to find the, the uh, area of the parallelogram anyway because that's not the height. Yeah, sure. okay. That's uh -huh. just a side, okay? All right, if you look here, I've got you three different triangles. You have acute, obtuse, and a right triangle. All right, and all the different little lines serve a purpose. So before you start writing and copying, I want you to listen to it so it makes sense, and then you can draw it on your paper. All right? If I label this side of the triangle to be the base, then the height has got to be perpendicular to that side. So, altitudes, okay? So if this is the base, then this red dotted line is the height. Does everybody see that? Because remember yesterday we said we're using base and height because we need to understand that those two things have to be perpendicular. Why would, why would it have to be perpendicular? Because that's, that is the distance to the farthest point away from that side, which would be this one. Okay, if I'm starting with this side, the farthest point from this side is this top of the thing, or this point way out here, and distance is always perpendicular. Okay? So if you use the other side... Well, I'm going to show you. We're going to actually use the colors and we're going to draw it out. If I use this as the base... That green dotted line is now the height. Okay, because the farthest point from this green line is right here. And the distance between that point and the green line is the perpendicular distance. Okay, and then finally, if I label this as the base, then that's the height. The blue dotted line is the height. Okay, so does that make sense? Okay. So there's not one set base and one set height for a triangle. There's three combinations. Okay, based on which side you choose to be your base. It's not always going to mean that it's standing on that side. All right, if you look at the obtuse triangle, if I call this the base of the obtuse triangle, what is the farthest point away from that line? Way up here, okay? Now, is there any way that I can draw a perpendicular line segment from this point down to the solid line? No. 